What's up, Josh here. Throughout my life, I've never really been the biggest fan of the Apple Watch. The thought of constant notifications buzzing on my wrist and yet another device that needs to be charged daily just didn't really appeal to me. It wasn't really until the Apple Watch Ultra that really piqued my interest because of the bigger battery life and the bigger screen. And so two years later, as the prices for used Ultras have dropped, I finally decided to give it a shot. So in this video, I'll be answering the questions of what is the Apple Watch actually good for and should you get one? Let's get into it. Now, one of my initial reservations about the Ultra was its size. I don't have big stocky wrists, and so I was afraid that the Ultra would look ridiculously oversized. But actually, despite my average size wrist, the Ultra actually doesn't look too out of place. To some people, it might look a little bit on the bigger size, but personally, I don't mind it. As far as comfort goes, the watch is actually very comfortable to use with the lighter titanium shell. I was actually pretty surprised by the fact that I could wear this all day, even at night for night tracking. And so far, I haven't really taken this off other than to charge. The large OLED display makes reading easy. If I get a notification or a text, I can very easily glance over to see if it's something important or if I can get to it later. Composing messages, using the calculator, scrolling through my app drawer. Generally, just using the Apple Watch Ultra is made so much better with a larger screen. Now, as far as the design and the overall looks of the Ultra, I'm actually a really big fan. When you look at it, it doesn't really scream hardcore rugged adventure like some of the Garmin watches do, but it also doesn't look as delicate as the stainless steel or aluminum Apple Watch watches. I think it actually strikes a pretty good balance between adventure and professional, which means you can pretty easily adapt the watch to a huge range of scenarios with different watch faces and bands. For example, currently I've got a more sophisticated professional look with this chronograph watch face as well as the titanium watch band by Nomad, but I can pretty easily take the strap off, put a rubber strap on and change the watch face and suddenly now I've got a pretty sporty look. But yeah, I am a huge fan of the customization. It just adds a whole other dimension to the whole experience and I ended up liking it way more than I thought I would. Now, the last thing we have to talk about regarding the physical design of the Apple Watch Ultra is the action button. Similar to the iPhone 15 Pro, the action button is a customizable button that you can map to a number of different shortcuts. Now, when I first got this watch, I found myself always accidentally pressing it because it was directly opposite of the digital crown as well as the side button. Thankfully though, after about a week, I got used to the placement of the action button and at first I started using it as a flashlight shortcut. And I I would say it came in handy occasionally, like it wasn't the most useful thing. But more recently, as I started running as a hobby, I assigned that action button to start my workout. And so I found that to be a little bit more useful, but still, I think they could do a little bit more with that button. Maybe like a do not disturb toggle. Um, I feel like that's a pretty obvious one that isn't there for some reason. Now, something else that's also incredibly good on the Apple Watch Ultra is the battery life. On the Ultra, I can get about two full days of use, which compared to my previous experience with other Apple Watches, I found with those other ones, they would die typically by the end of the day. And I think by more than doubling the battery life, you are essentially putting the, uh, I guess, management of charging back into the user's hands. It's just way more convenient for you to dictate when you wanna charge instead of the watch telling you to charge at the end of the day. And so for me, what a few days of use of the Apple Watch looks like is um, I'll start with a full charge and then by the end of the day, I'll have like 60% or 50% battery life. I'll get through a full nights of rest with sleep tracking. And then the next day, I'll just throw the watch on the charger for about 30 minutes, either while I'm showering or I'm playing some games. And that'll get me about 50% more use out of the watch. And so that cycle just continues. Now, I wouldn't be lying if I said I didn't wish that the Apple Watch Ultra had maybe like a four or five day battery life. I still find sometimes that um, the watch will send me a notification saying, hey, you should charge your Apple Watch before you go to sleep, otherwise you won't have enough for sleep tracking. And so those moments still happen. I'm still conscious of the battery life, but it is a, such a better experience than the previous Apple Watches I've owned. All right, enough with the boring bits. Let's talk about what the Apple Watch Ultra can do and what I have been using it for for the past two months. So here's sort of my go-to watch face setup. Uh, this one is called Modular Ultra. And I like this one because it looks pretty minimal and it still gives me a good number of info on the home screen. So up across the top, we've got today's date as well as a timer, which 
Recently, I've been using a lot of to cook pasta. I find that it's pretty easy just to tap. And then on the right side, we've got the temperature along with today's highs and lows. In the middle, we've got the time as well as a calendar widget. And then along the bottom, we've got my alarm as well as my parked car compass. This comes in handy incredibly often uh, when I'm parked in a busy parking lot and I forget where I parked. Uh, this tells me where my car is incredibly quickly. But yeah, I probably use this complication way more than I should admit. And then in the bottom right, I I've got my smart home controls, which is nice if I wanna set a scene or turn off a specific light. I'm also a big fan of the calculator because let's say you are at a restaurant uh, and the bill is $50, you say tip and you can kind of like customize how much you wanna tip. And then of course, I use this feature all the time. If you happen to misplace your iPhone, you can simply ping it iPhone's right here. And then lastly, I think one of the most underrated features of the Apple Watch is the alarm clock. And so instead of waking up to a really loud noise, what the Apple Watch will do is gently tap your wrist until you feel it and it progressively gets stronger and stronger until you wake up. And if you own an Apple Watch, I'm curious to know whether you like that feature or you don't because I do know some people that turn that feature off. But personally, I'm a big fan of it. One thing that I really appreciate about Apple Watches is their huge lineup of activities and sports that you can select from in the Workouts app. So the ones that I frequently use are running, surfing, and snowboarding, but then there are so many others that you can go through down this list. I'm also gonna be getting my open water scuba certification soon, and so it's nice to know that my Apple Watch can also double as a dive computer, and just the idea of my Apple Watch being able to grow with me, whether I'm taking on different hobbies or different sports, um, there's gonna be a way for me to use my Apple Watch Ultra in those activities, which is crazy. So as you can see here, everything gets integrated into the fitness app. So you can see as I've recently started running, it's really nice to be able to see the progress that you've been making um, throughout these runs. And then you can see here as I've gone surfing in Hawaii, I don't know why the heart rate cut out there, but um, it's pretty cool to be able to see how long I surfed for as well as how many calories I burned. And then I was also able to download a third party app called Dawn Patrol and log my surfs with even more information. And of course, all of that stuff gets mirrored into the fitness app as sort of the central hub for all of your workouts. Now, touching a little bit more on the whole running experience, I like the fact that I can pair my Bluetooth headphones to the watch itself uh, and download offline playlists. And so not only can I just leave my phone completely at home and just stream music off my Apple Watch Ultra, I can also use my watch to unlock my front door, uh, which bypasses anything that I need to take on my run other than the Apple Watch Ultra. I can get in and out of my house, play music. What more do you need? Now, the last thing I'll sort of talk about in regards to health and workouts is sleep tracking. So going into the health app and tapping on sleep and zooming out, you can sort of see the exact moment where I purchased the Apple Watch and started using it with uh, this more in-depth data. So last night I got about seven hours and 15 minutes of sleep and you can see all of the sleep stages down here, uh, but it doesn't really tell me much more with all of this raw data. Like, what does this mean? Is one hour and 23 minutes of deep sleep good? How should I be changing my sleep based off of the data? You know, one thing that I actually think is a good example of what I would want a health app to do uh, is with the cardio fitness. And so this tracks your VO2 max, in case you don't know what that is. This is the maximum amount of oxygen your body can consume during exercise. And so it's basically a really good indicator as to how healthy your heart is, and you can see, I am below average. And so personally, I would like to see more of this stuff. I would love to be able to compare myself to other people in my category to see if uh, you know, I'm healthy, below average, above average, what action steps should I take to become healthier? As nice as it is to see the raw data, I do think that some coaching and you know, some analytics would be nice as well. Now, what don't I like? Because as great as this watch is, there are some things that really annoy me about it. And the first one has to be the passcode. So every time you take your watch off to charge, or maybe it doesn't detect your heartbeat for some reason, you have to unlock it with a four digit passcode. And to me, this is one of the most frustrating things because uh, you know, sometimes I just wanna put the watch on and do my thing. But yeah, we're now in the age where we have fingerprint sensors on basically everything. Um, on the iPhones, of course, we have Face ID, uh, but on the MacBooks, you know, we have fingerprint sensors and on smartphones as well. And so hopefully in the Apple Watch Ultra 3, they can add something similar and so we can you know, do away with this whole passcode thing 
altogether. Some other weird software experiences I've had on the Ultra, um, the camera shutter app, I don't know what it is. Every time I open it, it seems to be black. Another thing I really don't understand is the fact that if you wanna change your alarm right here, let's say I tap on it, you have to tap five different times just to change your alarm. So I just tapped it, that's once. This is twice, three times, four times, five times. Now this is because I am using the alarm using the sleep app and so it's wanting me to go into sleep to change it, but still I think this integration could be a lot tighter and at this point I've gotten used to it, but yeah, it shouldn't have to be like this. But now sort of just to wrap it all up, let's answer these two questions. Who is the Apple Watch Ultra for and is it worth it? So personally, I think the Apple Watch Ultra is a great watch for anybody and everybody. I think as long as it looks good and fits on your wrist, then go for it. You don't have to be an extreme adventurer to take advantage of the battery life and the bigger screen. I think one of the benefits of the Apple Watch is that you're always connected to your digital world, but you can choose whether you wanna engage or not. And then as far as an adventure watch, I think this is perfect for the weekend warrior, somebody who has a hobby in a particular sport, but is not dedicating their life to that sport. Now, the second question here is, is it worth it? So I bought this Apple Watch Ultra used for about $425. And hands down, I can say it is 100% worth that price. Uh, if I were to spec out a brand new Series 9 Apple Watch, um, that would come out to over $400 anyway. And so it's right about in that ballpark with the price range. Now, if you are going with the used route, you do have to be careful with fakes and scammers. Um, I'll link a video at the end. Uh, I made a very similar investigation with the AirPods Max. So go ahead and check that out if you have the time. Now, the newer Ultra 2 does provide an even longer battery life and a slightly brighter screen. But in my opinion, these two things aren't really enough to justify the extra that you're paying for that watch. $800 is a lot of money. And even knowing what I do now about my whole experience with the Apple Watch, I'm not sure if I would spend $800. But yeah, that about does it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I'll try my best to answer them. Leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't ready for more quality tech videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.